there's absolutely two types of marketing in the insurance marketing world. I'm gonna cover them each. So there's two main ways to drive Facebook leads for insurance marketing. One, really, really changing the game. We spent $12 million on insurance marketing in 2019. Here's the three biggest things that we've learned. My name is Landon McCarter. I'm one of the managing partners of Secure Agent Marketing. We spent $12 million on insurance marketing in 2019 on behalf of us and our clients, marketing conferences, events, seminars, leads, final expense, term, mortgage protection, Medicare, Medicare stuff, you name it, we've done it, recruiting, et cetera, right? So I wanna make sure that you guys know that there's three main things that I've learned on, the, on my way to $12 million spent. The first thing that I wanna go through is I've found that there's, there's absolutely two types of marketing in the insurance marketing world. I'm gonna cover them each. One is just pure lead development. You're a producer or you have a team of producers, you need people to talk to. The biggest thing standing in the way between the producer and revenue is leads and people to talk to. So most of our conversations, I would say three out of four of our conversations ends up around some sort of lead production, lead um, actual activity, whether it's Facebook, Google, social media, you know, organic search engine optimization, website, whatever it is. So that's usually the, the primary way that people t t tend to look at insurance marketing. The second thing that I find larger businesses doing that are more invested in driving quality inbound traffic or quality leads to them is working on their brand, their brand development, their identity. This would come in the form of doing like website or video production, explainers, um, maybe putting together some more complex marketing funnels that aren't just focused on leads. It's like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a quality of lead that you can accomplish that is better than if you just wanna get as many leads as you can possibly through social media, right? So if you're doing multi-state campaigns, we can do Facebook leads for four or five bucks if we, if we need to. Um, but if you wanna go for a quality lead that's health qualified, that has a bank account, that let's just say has answered some qualifying questions, there's things that you can do along the marketing funnel that can qualify that lead. And those businesses that want those quality leads that aren't as um, focused on cost per lead, there's a lot of things you can do as well that way. The second thing that we've learned is that good grief does this landscape change. I cannot tell you how many times I have, we have switched up the actual way that we're generating leads or doing marketing. What I mean is, is during AEP, there's a different strategy that we found worked better than the strategy that we had the entire year. And once you know, after AEP, um, one of those strategies actually uh, started to work again for, for whatever reason. So one of the things, I'll give you an example of that. So there's two main ways to drive Facebook leads for insurance marketing. One is what's called internal lead forms. The second way to do it is called landing page conversion campaigns. So there's two different ways to actually drive Facebook leads. Landing page conversion campaigns are thought to be more quality, uh, sometimes more expensive, um, but better quality because you're leaving Facebook and going to, to the actual landing page and uh, filling out your lead form that way. It also gives you more flexibility to ask more qualifying questions. Since you're taking them off the Facebook platform, the landing page conversion campaign sometimes can drive a, a more quality lead. When I first, I mean, when I first started getting into insurance marketing, you know, about nine, 10 months ago, landing page conversion campaigns were so f much more expensive per lead than what lead forms were that it almost didn't make sense at all. Well, then for some reason, that kind of flip-flopped where all of a sudden landing page conversion campaigns were giving a better quality, um, higher cost per, I'm sorry, higher quality lead, lower cost per lead than even lead forms. The reason that was happening was because during AEP, all the people were throwing tons and tons of money at Facebook marketing, uh, carriers, et cetera, were all driving up lead costs uh, on the lead forms. And the way that Facebook works is it's a giant auction. So the more people that are doing lead forms, the, the more expensive it's gonna be. So that actually raised the lead form cost. We had campaigns that were landing, per, landing page conversion campaigns that were running cheaper than lead forms, which was kind of crazy. So it's just like this constant balance. Sometimes landing page conversion works um, cheaper per lead. Sometimes it's the lead form. You gotta make sure that you're doing both of those things. You also honestly wanna kinda of be doing both at the same time if you're a good marketer. Now, what's interesting too is, is I've talked to people that would swear by the landing page conversion campaign, and I have people that'll swear by the lead form campaign, right? So it's really weird how it all works. You have gotta make sure you find a good flavor for what you're doing, because the way that we just generate leads, I can't, I feel sorry for anybody that is like, you know, trying to not be full-time marketing and then also do their own Facebook like campaigns. That seems impossible to me to actually do it the right way. I, I mean, if you're getting frustrated and you're doing your own lead campaigns, then I can I, I feel for you. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be hiring professionals to do that for you. Now, 
Admittedly, I've only been in the insurance marketing space exclusively for about nine months, but I've been doing digital marketing for you know seven years, uh, really ever since Facebook became a platform, a paid platform. I was doing digital marketing before that was even the case. I got my degree in marketing at Missouri State, and I can tell you right now, there is a digital revolution that is happening in the marketing world, okay? These direct mail pieces, okay, I'm telling you guys, they are going away. I don't knock anybody that's currently doing direct mail, but the future, I promise you, is not gonna be direct mail. I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna look like exactly, but it will not be direct mail, I can tell you that much. So one of the things that's really interesting is, is that because direct mail is, is struggling so much, and it's actually easier to drive leads digitally through the internet, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Google, Instagram, you know, whatever, who knows? I know a guy doing TikTok ads right now and actually doing, doing some damage, you know, or not ads, but doing TikTok and actually getting some leads that way. So um, what I wanna tell you is, is that what, what's because the digital revolution is happening, insurance telesales is also happening, meaning we are, as consumers, used to not needing a face-to-face -face interaction to trust someone with Amazon and all these different uh, methods of buying products, we don't need that personal interaction anymore, that customer service anymore. And that is leaking into the insurance marketing space. I can feel a changing of the guard happening right now where because the digital marketing is, is driving a lot of the lead flow for these, digital, for these insurance companies, it's also leading itself towards telesales because as an insurance agent, you can get licensed in multiple states, drive leads in multiple states because it's actually cheaper to do that, and then have a cheaper cost per acquisition as long as you're doing multiple states on your campaign because it lowers your lead cost, it gives you more opportunities, you can have a more quality lead, um, you have more people to choose from. And so telesales and driving those leads digitally is like really, really changing the game. Um, we have a particular client that has a large field source, um, field sales team, and also a large call center. And the call center didn't exist five years ago. And wouldn't you know that the call center is now almost 40, 50% of the production of the entire business when the field force has been going on in existence for like 28 years or something, right? There is an absolute a mind shift that is happening in the in the public that are is allowing people to feel comfortable giving you their social security number, your bank account, your driver's license number, whatever that information is that, that you needed to get for those applications. They are more comfortable giving that over the phone than they ever have been, and so it's working. I know people that are uh, making a lot of money doing insurance telesales. So digital marketing with insurance telesales is something that I see the future of the industry. The next 10 years, um, if you're not working towards that, um, as a portion, whether it's using digital leads and telesales to set appointments or whatever it is, if you're not working towards uh, telesales in some capacity, um, I think you may be a little bit uh, behind what others are doing. Not to say that as an individual producer, you have to do telesales to make money. You can absolutely make money in the field. I'm not saying that at all. So it's not that field sales is going away. It's just that there's a massive trend in the industry shifting towards digital lead development away from um, direct mail into digital, which is lending itself towards telesales multi-state. Uh, programs. So it is a tumultuous time in the insurance industry. There's a changing of the guard happening. There's an interesting dynamic. I know a lot of guys right now that are, you know, in gals that are in their 20s making six figures on insurance marketing. It's crazy. I'm sorry, insurance sales, not insurance marketing. And you know what? They're using um, a lot of digital, a lot of telesales leads, a lot of direct mail, but it's, it's, it's leaning more towards digital and telesales than anything else. So that's just something that we learned, spending $12 million on insurance marketing alone, and happy hunting, good luck. Thanks for checking out the three biggest things I've learned spending $12 million in insurance marketing. Now go over here and check out three key concepts in insurance digital marketing, and five insurance marketing tips working right now. Digital space, you're gonna get left behind. I'm gonna break down three key concepts that if you're not doing in 2020, you are setting yourself up to fail. And there's a couple key components, okay? 